All right, so we got a new function that's been added. We got the mech that we just defeated, the LAV. We got access to the medical team and the sick babe. Amanda joined us. We got a whole lot of new weapons, new items. Our boys are getting better. We got a new plant. Amanda's getting her broken ass in the sick bay. That boy's salty as fuck that I kidnapped him, so he's gonna be in the brig. And we got a whole lot of work to do as far as organizing MSF. So this is the LAV, LAV type G, that we just took. Took it down with a trank pistol. It's looking good at 100%. We'll be able to use those and outer ops in the future, but that's gonna be coming up a little bit later. No, I don't wanna view the tutorial. We're gonna sit here and we're gonna organize these guys. We're gonna put these mechanics, commando, commando. Let's put these two into the combat unit and uh, these two, our two mechanics, let's put them in the R&D team. Now I do remember having some medics in the combat unit so we're gonna see if we can get all these medics into the medic team so when guys get injured and out of ops or they come down with PTSD randomly we can get these guys healed up and better and back operating at full potential all right so now we got a couple of missions here. We got the Marksman Challenge. We got two Marksmanship Challenges and the Rescue Chico mission. We got to find out where the nukes are at, but we also got to get our boy Chico. We got to find him. Snake, the nukes appear to have left the coastal marshes and reached the mountains around Irazu. But without a guide, it's going to be tough tracking those things in the mountains. So we need you to infiltrate one of their bases, a prison facility. I hope nothing's happened to Amanda's brother. I hear you. There may be other Sandinistas held there too. To bring them back safely to MSF, use the Fulton recovery system. As I'm sure you know from experience, it's completely harmless. After all, you won't have time to sit there and convince every single one of them to join. One other thing, Snake. Amanda. Those CIA bastards confiscated some of the houses in the village. Chico's got to be inside one of them. The houses, huh? How do I tell which ones? When they took over the houses, they installed new front doors for security purposes. The new doors are blue, with peepholes, so you can see what's inside. Blue doors. Got it. You're getting close to the end of the transport route. Good luck, Snake. Alright, so we gotta go find this boy Chico. First, we're gonna look over some of these briefing files. We're gonna learn some stuff from Miller. We're gonna learn... ...about enemy soldier types. Amanda and her crew tell me they've managed to identify several different categories of mercenaries employed by the CIA. Give me a rundown. Sounds like info I could use. No problem. I'll go through them in order. The type of enemy you'll be seeing most is the type that patrols and guards a specific operational area. For the sake of convenience, Amanda's crew calls the outdoor ones patrolmen and the indoor ones guards. They might look like they're just out for a stroll, but don't be fooled. They're sharper than they look. All of their senses are finely honed. Normally, they'll patrol along fixed routes, but when the alert level is raised, they'll assume a more efficient alert posture and focus on defending specific points. That's bad for you. Obviously, they can hold their own in combat, and with body armor, it'll be even harder to take them down. If they're wearing a bulletproof helmet, you can forget about one-shot kills. Just a heads up. You'll need to be smart about using camo and pick your routes. The most important thing is to avoid detection. When the enemy spots you and goes on alert, they may call in a backup strike team. These assault teams are heavily armed, well-trained, and highly dangerous. Amanda's crew calls them commandos. Unlike the patrolmen, these guys will actively, relentlessly track and hunt you down like hounds. Hmm. <laughs> hounds to hunt a former foxhound. Bring it on. They won't give up easily even if they lose sight of you. They'll clear out any likely hiding places they come across. So don't get too comfy in one spot, or you might get caught again. Keep your eyes fixed on them and what they're doing. Also, be aware that commando gear includes body armor. So don't think you can deal with them by going in guns blazing. All I've got to do is find an exposed weak point, and... Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
There are areas out there where enemy soldiers are deployed in multiple layers for extra coverage. More than a few of those will be attacking you from a distance, rooftops and far off vantage points. Try not to get too distracted by nearby enemies, because you could be leaving yourself wide open to longer range attacks. I'll be careful. We know there are variations in the kinds of gear patrolmen and commandos wear, especially the body armor. Our scouts report that an enemy's defense and firing accuracy are directly proportional to how heavy their gear is. Hmm. Those must be the guys with the highest combat skills. They can fight in heavier gear without their performance suffering. Supposedly, it's pretty easy to tell the difference in gear just by looking. So remember, use extra caution when dealing with enemies wearing heavy gear. Alright, so let's learn a little bit about the battle range. Enemies will try to fight you from different distances, based on the weapon they've got equipped. When you meet an enemy, get a good look at what they're carrying. It can make or break your chances in battle. Enemies carrying handguns and shotguns will try and get in close. That makes them dangerous, but at the same time, easier to hit. Keep your wits about you and you can turn a threat into an opportunity. Enemies carrying assault rifles and machine guns will usually fire at you from farther away. Use whatever cover you can find, then return fire with a few well-placed shots of your own. Don't expect enemies carrying sniper rifles or rocket launchers to get up close and personal. They'll be constantly moving from place to place looking for an opening to snipe at you. Tricky bastards. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Go with the sniper rifle. Make sure you stay out of their line of sight, and when they expose themselves, take them down. Alright, so that was Miller giving us a few tips on tactics when engaging the enemy. Let's learn a little bit more about this mission specifically. Let's talk to Paz about the tropical drive for us. Areas with a distinct dry season, like the Pacific Coast, have tropical dry forests. During the dry season, the trees drop their leaves. It gives you a clearer view, but at the same time, there are fewer places to hide. So be careful. Sounds dull. It is not really. A lot of trees flower during the dry season, including my favorite, the Tabebuya. It has these amazingly vivid yellow flowers. Costa Rica has several active volcanoes, Irasu being one of them. That's where Camino de Lava comes from, huh? The tropical dry forests around here are quite different from our rainforests. They lose their leaves in the dry season. Tropical forests are not all thick jungles. A few of them even have cacti. Some of Costa Rica's greatest assets are its diverse forests and natural landscapes. Costa Rica got its first real railroads up and running about a hundred years ago. Their primary purpose was to move coffee harvested in the central basin to the Caribbean coast. They built railroads here a hundred years ago? That's impressive. It was even more difficult than you would imagine. Later, they started using the railroads for shipping bananas too. There still might be some branch lines around here. Aldea de los Despiertos means Village of the Awake. <laughs> Weird name. The area is littered with coffee fields, and there is a factory nearby. The villagers are fans of coffee, so... Ah, they don't get much sleep, huh? They've got a sense of humor, all right. I cannot believe they would take over a place like this and use it as a prison. It is unforgivable for both la CIA and the thugs they employ. All the villagers wanted was to live in peace. What gives the CIA the right to crush them like that? They don't care about anyone's rights but their own. It's just the way some people are. You really think so? Don't worry. It just gives me the right to teach them a lesson. Alright, so we learned about the environment. Let's talk to Amanda about rescuing Chico. Amanda. How do I get to the prison camp? First, head up the narrow mountain path. 
The path will gradually open up and you'll come to a fork in the road. Watch yourself up there. You'll be lower than the surrounding terrain. So if you head down the middle, you'll make for an easy target. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. Take the leftward path to reach the prison camp. What can you tell me about the prison camp? Well, it used to be a village until they took control of it. It's a maze of paths, so watch out for soldiers on patrol. <laughs> I'll be sure not to stop and say hi. Use the paths carefully, and you should be able to stay out of view. Where are they holding Chico? One of the houses, most likely. You can peek through the doors. Just press the action button when the icon appears. You could also listen to any sounds inside for clues. Good idea. Guards will still be on the move while you're looking inside. Make sure you don't get caught. And Snake... I know. I'll bring him back. Thank you. I know I can count on you. Alright, so we're going out of our way to rescue your little brother. Let's find out a little bit more about you, Amanda. Tell me about yourself. Amanda, when did you join up with the Sandinistas? About a year ago, when I went into the mountains with mi viejo and his group. I thought your dad was with the FSLN from the start. No. He fought alongside General Sandino. But after that, he retired for a while. He found a job, got a wife and a house, and raised us kids. Then one day, some Sandinista students came by. And he felt the old fire in his belly. Something like that. All he did was help them escape from La Guardia, though. But then La Guardia showed up. They broke into our house and began pushing him around, shouting questions. I'm guessing he kept his mouth shut. No matter how hard they hit him. Our house was trashed. After that, he was on their list. They harassed him day and night. It was only then that he gave himself over to the Sandinistas. He kept it hidden from us at first, so we would not get hurt. Mm. He sounds like a good father. He was. But my mother got fed up with it. She left us. I don't blame her. Why didn't you go with her? It was a hard decision for sure, but like my father, I could not let Samosa get away with his crimes. But most of all... Chico. He is too much like his papa. One way or the other, he was going to stay, and I could not leave him behind. Soon enough, La Guardia drove us out, and we found ourselves in the mountains. It just kind of happened. Well, for an accidental revolutionary, you sure put up a hell of a fight. The mountains make men into warriors. The training is harsh, but it brings us that much closer to being hombres nuevos. Chico couldn't ask for a better sister. I can see why they picked you to be Commandante. When I was little, I came down with malaria. Unlucky for me, it was the bad kind. I was in a daze the whole time. And at one point, they said I was not going to make it. Mm. Malarial encephalopathy. I hear it's pretty common in tropical malaria cases. Even today, my memory sometimes gets a little fuzzy. Since then, I've had this fear of mosquitoes. When I hear them buzzing nearby, I get jumpy. Ah, that explains the chain smoking. See, I thought it might help keep the mosquitoes away, just a little. Maybe it is all in my head. You're the same way, right? Well, uh, I will say this. I prefer a cigar over mosquitoes. <laughs> Me too. I've got to hand it to you. It takes guts to conquer your fear like that and live a gorilla's life in the wild. It is nothing. El Che did not let asthma stop him from leading the revolution. Compared to him, I am no hero. Sorry to hear about your dad. Thank you for saying that. Mi viejo was the leader of the Frente. He was the last of the generation that knew General Sandino. He saw the General's exploits firsthand as a boy. He would tell us stories about it all the time and about how the General was assassinated. Did you know he was getting money from the KGB? I had some idea, but I did not have the courage to confront him about it. I know it was a painful decision for him to make. <sighs> I can imagine. Yes. My father was a good man. I loved him as a daughter, and his soldiers believed in him. Thanks to him, La Frente held together even in the worst of times. 
I don't know if I can ever fill his shoes. Chico's 12, right? <laughs> right. Isn't he a little short for his age? Malnourishment. Food is hard to come by when you're running around in the jungle. <laughs> He's got quite an appetite. I know. I didn't want him to come in the first place. But there was no one to take him in. I had no choice but to look after him. Don't be so hard on yourself. Sometimes it's better for a kid to be with his family than far away in a safe place. Hmm. Thank you. Promise me this, though. When your fight is over, make sure he gets a proper education. Give him a chance to be something other than a gorilla. It's not too late to teach him something other than fighting. Okay, I promise. You know what book Chico really likes? The World Encyclopedia of Mysterious Creatures. The Loch Ness Monster, the Yeti... UMAs. Yeah, I know. He's still so much like a boy. I worry about him. He'll be fine. I know plenty of grown men who still go crazy over UMAs. Are... are you serious? Alright, so we learned all about Amanda, all about her family, and we learned all about this mission. Let's get set up to get it done. We gotta go rescue our boy Chico. So we got the analyzer. Did I get MVG developed yet? No, I did not. So we're looking good right here on all our equipment. Oh, we got stun grenades. That's right. Let's put some stun grenades on until I get some C4. Then I'll switch that out. And we're pretty much ready to go. Let's get this mission started. Chico's in a prison camp north of here. Okay, so we're gonna see. Not enough room, huh? We'll keep it here at the base. We can take as many soldiers with us, cause we still are low. We've been taking a whole lot of guys, bringing them back to MSF, but we're still low on soldiers overall. So we're gonna see if we can still get as many as possible. Bolton recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter. Those are the only two dudes in this area. The from base ahead leaves you completely exposed to sniper fire. I have a bad feeling about this. Don't worry, Miller. I'm the master of sneaking. There's only a 90% chance I'll get my nutsack sniped off. Alright, here we go. So this area is pretty interesting. Because it has a couple of... Sniper! Better be careful if you don't want your head blown off. Well, the sniper is the interesting part about this area. Because the sniper... Let's put him to sleep first. And his little... Amigo... You ain't see nothing, you ain't see nothing. Recovery, your helicopter is complete. Woo. What I was trying to say is the sniper is the interesting part about this little area right here. Because if we can get close up to him, scan him, you'll see that he is an S rank in the intel team. But there's no way for me to get up there and kidnap him and bring him back to the unit. So that kind of ties into what we got to do later on in the game. And develop what is called the Fulton Call Gustav Rocket. So we can be able to shoot that rocket and be able to kidnap him using Fulton Recovery. But that's a lot of development for the Intel team and R&D team that we have to do to be able to unlock that weapon. Chico's in one of these houses. You've got to find him, Snake. Alright, so this is the area where Chico's at. Like I said, I'm going to try and take out all these dudes. And there's about five different areas where you can check with the blue doors. We're gonna put all these boys to sleep first. Bolton recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter. Bullets over there. Let's see if we got anything over this wall. Nope. I'll leave the bullets, I really don't need them. So we can kidnap this last dude and there's a guy on the other side of this van. Right over here. I don't see nothing. You're napping. Alright, so like I said, there's five areas, or five doors, as you can check to see where Chico's at. And these are the blue doors. Check inside a house by pressing the action button in front of the door. Bolton recovery helicopter is complete. Alright, so that's one door. All the times I've played this game, and all the times I've played this mission, he's never been in this door. I've always come over here, he's never been in here. There's one door over here. That boy is taking a good nap. <laughs> Dreaming about strippers and shit. 
not this one. All right, so those are the two doors that Chico's never in when I'm doing these missions. the houses being used to hold prisoners have been fitted with blue doors. Yeah, I know Miller. Come on now. Oh. Somebody taking a shower? Who's there? Hey, big boss, you being a pervert, man. Taking peeks. Mama. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, so this is the last door, and he'll be in here. Chico, is that you? Uh, who's there? Chico, it's me. Joy. Joy, that photographer. That's right, a war photographer. Huh? I thought you were here for the birds. Yeah, um, the birds of the battlefield. Whoa, is that chess? Can I see it? Wow, the same kind of chair used. You can't keep it, kid. Here, have these instead. Those photos? Huh. Oh no, Amanda! She's safe, don't worry. Are you sure? We're patching her up back in my place. She's hurt? I said, don't worry. It's just a broken leg. You got any cigarettes? Hey, cigar, huh? Hey! Not for kids. Chico, do you know where they took the cargo? Cargo? What cargo? Let me rephrase that. How do they get stuff from the coast up here? Oh, that I can tell you. When the cargo gets to the harbor, they first send it up the marshes on a barge. Then, they load it onto a jungle train past the banana plantation and transport it by rail. The train stops here. When it gets to the train terminal past the coffee plantation, they reload it again. This time onto a truck, which disappears into a tunnel heading toward the mountains. Disappears? Chico, what's on the other side of that tunnel? Nobody knows. None of our compas ever got close enough. He's protected by a spirit. Uh, spirit. Yeah, a giant monster. El Basilisco. The king of snakes. No, 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 really, I saw it. I was camping up there one day, and just as I was waking up around dawn, I heard this loud noise. I opened my eyes and saw an enormous shadow. Must have been 30 bada at least. He was walking on legs as big as trees. Where did you see it? At the terminal near the tunnel, but I only saw it that one time. What exactly were you doing there? I, uh... Well, me and my sister got into a fight. And you just happened to go camping. You know, their train should be arriving at the place I saw El Basilisco right about now. Is it far? No, really. Go past the coffee plantation, and it'll be to the north. What are you chasing? Something that could keep the world in balance. Or destroy it. Huh? I heard that place was a narcotics plant before those guys took it over. But you already knew that, didn't you? Huh. Look, I get it. Even revolutionaries need to pay the bills. Still, must be tough for a kid like you to swallow. You're damn right it is. The route they use to transport stuff is the same one me viejo used to smuggle drugs. He sold the drugs to the Norte Americanos and used the profits to fund the army. They tried to keep it hidden from me. Is that why you went camping? Yes. I managed to sneak into the plant a few times and... and tried to set it on fire. Everyone treats me like a child. I, I I couldn't stand it anymore. I'm not a kid, I'm 12. Couldn't do it though, could you? <laughs> Chico, growing up means choosing how you're gonna live your life. To do the right thing, you sometimes have to leave <laughs> the things you care about behind. Parents, family, your homeland. But mi viejo. Pop. 
Tico. Look at the photos. Viejo. He's gone. But there's one thing you don't ever leave behind. Your memories. Keep them safe. You want to get out of here, Chico? I do, but... Come back with me. Your sister's waiting for you. I can't go back. I can't face everybody. You told them where your compas are. I see. Nothing to be ashamed of. Pain gets the better of us all. I wish I was dead. Okay, then. I'll put you out of your misery. What? Any last words? Shoot. You are only going to kill a man. I just wasted a bullet. Don't waste your life. Listen to me, Chico. You died here today. You understand? You're hombre nuevo. A new man. Now. Give that new life to me. Huh? Fight with me, little soldier. Show me how strong you really are. <laughs> Dry your tears. Then promise me one thing. No smoking until you get older. Remember, real heroes are never as polished as the legends that surround them. You got it, boss. Uh, snake is fine. What's that? Man, I love that cutscene. Big boss's gravely voice. That music in the background. The inspirational words. All right, so that was the rescue Chico mission. Of course, we got no kills, no alerts. We did take our time, as far as the clear time is concerned. But as I always say, we're gonna be concerned with the story. And we got Chico back into our unit. Amanda should be happy. Snake, Chico made it over. Snake! Chico, you made it. Made it? Don't give me that. You say you're gonna give me a new life, and then you nearly kill me. <laughs> I take it you didn't enjoy the trip. What's the big idea? Dragging me off in a... balloon. I might as well have taken a Calibri. At least you got a nice view. Or are you afraid of heights? Whatever. I just wish you would explain it to me first. Would you have agreed to go if I did? Thank you for saving us, Snake. Amanda, a word of advice. What? Stop treating him like a child. Yes. Yes, I know. You're right. I shouldn't. Amanda, you're coming back after your leg heals, right? Of course. We still have work to do. We, huh? Are you sure you've got Chico's future in mind when you say that? What do you mean? We're sworn to our father's cause, to helping the revolution succeed. Revolution or no revolution, you pick up a gun and sooner or later you're going to hell. Are you prepared for that? I am. If the alternative is giving up the country I love, I'll take hell. Really? Well then, you're gonna have to stop treating Chico like a brother, and start treating him like a soldier. I... You're right. Welcome to hell. Snake, can I ask you a favor? Shoot. You find any prisoners from El Frente, you bring them back alive. Because... Hmm. You're trying to make amends for talking. Well, not just that. Because they're compas. All right. But first, I've got to catch up to that cargo. I'll do whatever I can to help. Call me if there's anything you need to know about the area. And... And what? Let me know if you encounter any wildlife you've never seen before. Never seen before? What, like that Basilisco you were talking about? I'm talking about UMAs. UMAs? You know, like ancient dinosaurs or, or legendary monsters. One day, I'm going to be a hunter. Is that right? Okay. 
Sure. If you want to know more, I'm happy to tell you. Right. I'll be in touch, Chico. Okay, Snake. The enemy's cargo is headed for the next outpost, a rail terminal. Chico says no one's ever set foot past there. Their main base is probably on the other side of that tunnel. Unless we catch those spears before reaching it, they'll be in enemy hands. You've got to stop them. Hurry, Snake. Boss, I had an idea. Listen to this. Let me guess. You want to start running ads in the local gossip rags. Please, what do you take me for? I thought that with all the new guys we've got, we should get an intel team going. We'd send agents around the country to scout out different locations. That way we're better prepared, no matter where we end up. Hmm, that's actually not a bad idea. They could probably develop recon equipment for us too. We could also have them transport goods and direct the mother base support strikes. You can send an item to a co-op teammate from the delivery menu. 